So floaters. Uh, in the context of this video, what I'm talking about are uh, you've got your high poly mesh more or less complete, uh, but there's lots of detail you want to add, but you don't necessarily want to have to stitch it in or model it in. And floaters are basically a pretty easy way to add that detail. And the kind of detail I'm talking about are like screw heads or like little scoop out shapes or uh, uh, little bumps, you know, that kind of stuff. Just stuff that makes the mesh kind of come alive, but is, like I said, kind of tedious to detail in. And floaters, uh, the way they operate is they are what they say on the tin. Uh, you got your high poly mesh and you got this other mesh that kind of floats just above the surface of it. Hence, it floats. And when you bake your normal map and that sort of stuff, uh, the floater gets picked up uh, along with the original surface and, and it bakes out like it was uh, part of it and seamless. So we'll take a look at how that works here shortly. And we'll also take a look at floaters from the low poly perspective because there's certain advantages there. It's not exactly the same thing, but I think it's close enough that we can talk about it here. So let's get going. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, uh, this is the mesh I'm going to deal with. You know, it's super simple, but you know we're not here for a, a modeling a tutorial, are we? So you can see this is super, a super simple low poly mesh. Uh, this is the high poly version. Uh, it just has the edges beveled and smoothed out. So um, as long as this large edge detail and surface detail uh, can transfer to this low poly, uh, you know, I'll be a happy man. And so if we flip over to Substance Painter. Uh, which is where I do all of my baking, uh, you can see that that is what's happened. Uh, I did the bake, uh, everything looks good. Uh, the low poly is nice and shaded and smoothed out uh, just the way I want it to be. So with that said, uh, let's talk about what a floater is and how we can leverage it. So for this demonstration, I've gone ahead and I've added a couple of, of new elements um, that sit on top of the high poly. And you can see that these things are, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, if you look closely, you can see if I turn on wireframe, these are not actually stitched in. They're just sitting, uh, they're on top of the surface. They're, they're floating. And this applies to a lot of different kinds of detail. This big bump thing over here, I mean, if I don't need to see this prop from the side, like, like say this is you know, inside of a recess or something, uh, having a large floater like that that sticks up a long way is actually not a problem. Uh, as long as your bake cage uh, will extend far enough to get beyond that floater and have it be included uh, in your projection, you're fine, right? So this big thing is a floater. These little vent things are floaters. And stuff like screw heads are floaters too. You know, this is not actually a part of the mesh, but it's sitting up there. And we can, uh, you know, make as many of these you know, as we want to. We can just have a whole row of them along the bottom of the mesh. Uh, and they'll all bake out down there like they were stitched in, but it's so much less work. So uh, my weirdness is making me rotate these randomly. And so I'm going to pop this over to Substance Painter and show you how the rebake looks. So back in Substance Painter, and you can see that I've, I've rebaked the low poly mesh and it's picked up uh, all that floating detail uh, just wonderfully. And uh, this looks as if you know, you had modeled in, but you didn't, of course. Now, obviously the drawback, and we talked about this earlier, is that, you know, this nice rounded piece I put up here and these screw heads and that kind of stuff, uh, they're not part of my silhouette. You know, they're just flat detail now, but they're in the normal map you know, and they look good. So it's really up to you uh, as an artist to decide when using a floater uh, is appropriate and when it's not. Obviously, one time that it's not appropriate is when the player will notice the silhouette change or the lack thereof. Or say this was some sort of like a big speaker console and you're doing a VR experience and the player could get their head right down next to the surface. Well, these bolts are not going to hold up anymore. So you're, you're better off just modeling the bolts uh, and including them you know, in the low poly and all that. But, you know, that's the basics of it. So to be honest, now that workflow of modeling uh, all of your floaters in is kind of becoming the old school method. And the new school stuff is like Substance Painter, which is my choice, or, or the Quixel Suite, or something similar. 
And what it involves is just basically you have a black and white image uh, that represents the height changes, you know, from black being flat to white being the highest point. And you just stamp them on the mesh. So the way you do that uh, is you set up a fill layer over here. And on that fill layer, we turn off uh, for demonstration purposes, we're going to turn off everything except for height. Uh, you would normally do things like say, okay, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm stamping down bolts, so they're also metal and they're shiny, but you know, you get the idea here. And I'll sc scrub the height uh, all the way up to the highest, just about as high as it can go. Now, for this, uh, we're going to add a black mask to this layer because I don't want it to affect the whole mesh, and it's easier to put the alpha masks on the mask layer. Uh, as opposed to painting with them directly because it allows you to tweak it later uh, uh, which we'll do here in a second so let me get this down this bolt alpha that i uh, that i imported and bring this down to the same sort of level and i'll just stamp them in here next to the old ones next to the baked ones you know you can see this looks more or less the same uh, if you're hearing a bunch of noise my dog is being weird <laughs> uh, so anyway, you see that those bolts that I stamped or, or that I painted in there look basically the same as the floater bolts. So in terms of that aspect of it, there's really no difference between the two techniques. Now there is a nice advantage here uh, in that I can go into my fill layer that I had already set up and I say, well, you know, I don't want them to stick out quite that far. So I can adjust this slider down or up and you can see them changing if you watch them there. And then I can go down and say, well, actually they should inset well, no, they should stick up. You know, and like I said, I can add metal to this and say, well, these should be metallic. And, oh yeah, these should probably change in roughness. Not quite that shiny, just a little shiny, like kind of like a, you know, like a muted metal and that sort of thing. Now, obviously you can adjust your floater as well, but in a different way. Because you, know, you can go back to your high poly mesh, you can adjust your floaters, and export and rebake and tweak them that way. Uh, if you want to tweak your stamps, you have to erase them, uh, bring a new alpha in and restamp them. So both ways have pluses and minuses. But, but the end result is that um, neither way is a huge hassle, uh, which is a big advantage. Uh, so there is one major caveat that I wanted to point out uh, before I move on to the next section. These, uh, when you stamp these details down, um, uh, they don't get to participate in stuff like smart materials. So uh, when using something like Substance Painter, and I can't speak for Quixel because I don't really have, this, have the knowledge base with that app, but uh, if I use a smart material that has edge detail and edge wear and AO grime and that kind of stuff, the stamp stuff won't participate in that. So I'll just quickly uh, drag a smart material here to the top of the stack and, and you can see with this material you know there's edging you know, there's edge chips and there's grime and stuff around the bolts but you'll notice the stuff that i stamped down doesn't have any of that on it and that's just uh, the nature of the beast because you're stamping it directly onto the normal map but it's not transferring that information to the curvature map and the thickness map and the other maps that it has baked um, during the high to low poly process. So um, you have to weigh uh, which way it works the best for the prop that you're building. You know, it sounds like a cop out because I say it every time, but it, that's how it is. It depends, but it's good to have options. And there's two options right there to add some detail to your mesh. Now we'll look at low poly here uh, real quick before we finish up. So what do I mean when I say low poly floater? Well, all I'm talking about is, uh, let's use the example case again of you've decided that that, that, that row of bolts needs to change the silhouette. Uh, they're big chunky bolts, or maybe you know the player is gonna be able to get their head up close to it in VR or whatever and see them. So you go ahead and you model them out and you bake them out like everything else. Now there's an inclination to make the low poly mesh watertight. So everything is stitched together you know, into one, one mesh that you could 3D print if you wanted to. But that's not always necessary. 
And in a case like this, you, you may sometimes want to go with this solution instead, which has the bolts modeled uh, and they're baked as normal, but they aren't part of the underlying surface. The underlying surface is just one polygon. Now there's, there's pluses and minuses to this. Uh, one of the pluses is that, like I said, it's one polygon. You know, there's one there, you know, but here there's eight. So it's an eight to one savings to float it on the surface. Now we're going to get back to that, that cop out caveat again, but if your engine has specific lighting uh, requirements that requires watertight meshes, well, then you're going to have to make watertight meshes. Or if you find that you're getting weird cracks in the lighting or whatever, because the stuff that's floating, the, uh, the lighting engine is not quite precise enough to figure that out. So it shoots light between cracks and stuff. Yeah, there's a myriad of reasons why this might go badly, but on the whole, uh, this can really save you a lot of polygons uh, and a lot of time because now that you have these bolts separated, yeah, they're ripe just to copy around the mesh and uh, you know, add bolts wherever you need them to without taking up uh, more texture space. So, you know, um, you can use this method to its strengths or uh, ignore it if it doesn't appeal to you. Thanks.